After posting my Obi-Wan armor build, a few of my more eagle-eyed subscribers noticed that the lightsaber I was holding wasn't actually Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber, but actually Luke's from Return of the Jedi. Which, I mean... <sighs> That wasn't the point of the video, it was clearly called How to Build Obi-Wan's Arm. Why do you care about the saber discrepancies, but not that I'm clearly wearing regular old earth pants? Or the lack of beard? <sighs> But you're right, there are subtle differences. So I guess today I'm gonna make Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber. The craziest thing is I've done this. I've done this before. I know I've done this before. But that was the second lightsaber I ever built. So <laughs> I think I could do better. Here we go. For this build, I used EVA foam, EVA foam dowels, EVA foam triangle strips, fast dry filler putty, PVC pipe, PVC pipe cutter, a wooden dowel, regular wood, reflective tape, clear packing tape, scavenged parts, super glue, glue, hot glue, paint, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, a kyber crystal, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First I found a toy that had a few of the right details that I could transplant. I got this from a thrift store. Every thrift store ever has cheap lightsaber toys. It's nowhere near accurate, if nothing else it would be a good example of what not to do, but some of the parts could be useful, such as the pommel, which in real life is an extremely rare and impossible to find sink knob. I also gathered some PVC plumbing parts, one of which was perfect for a lower grip. I don't even know how that happened. It's uncanny. But I also need a spine to hold the blade in place, as well as all those details. So I used a length of PVC pipe for the core. This is going to run most of the length of the saber. I cut it off with a PVC cutter. For the wider section, I cut up this piece of scrap PVC pipe, and I found this slightly narrower gauge that would fit inside of it. I lightly sanded it on the belt sander, because in my experience, paint has a hard time sticking to unsanded PVC pipe. I mean, the paint that was on this before was flaking off while I was handling it, so that's a pretty good indicator. Also, there was writing on it and I don't think English is a thing in the Star Wars galaxy. Next, I chopped off the pommel of the toy lightsaber. In fact, you'd be surprised how often that happens in movies. There's like a hero prop and then all the background people get toys because I mean, they're all out of focus anyway. Next, I cut off the belt loop with my side cutters and smoothed out the jagged cut with my rotary tool. Then I drilled a hole for the eventual key ring, but there was still writing on the bottom, so I had to sand that away. Next, I cut the inner PVC pipe down to size and carved out a slot for the kyber crystal to go in later. Then I super glued it to the pommel. I marked where it would end up on the inside of the wider PVC pipe so I'd know where to put the stoppers and the o-ring. For those, I'm gonna use EVA foam circles. I already have a lot of those offcuts left over from previous projects where I had to drill a hole. These are essentially meant to keep the center PVC pipe centered inside of the wider pipe. I cut up a bunch of those and placed them inside the main cylinder, but didn't really work out. I'm not saying it's impossible, but the center pipe kept coming out crooked. So I tore them all out and tried again with wooden hole saw off cuts. Again, left over in past tutorials. These are made from a hole saw set in case you have to make them from scratch. I had to widen the pilot hole with a wider drill bit. This one's actually meant for plexiglass, but sometimes I find them useful for carpentry. In carpentry, while carpenting, remember to wear a dust mask. I think a regular dust mask should be okay. I glued those into the the main pipe and inserted the narrow one. I made sure that the pommel fit inside before moving on. For the middle of the saber, I used a length of EVA foam dowel and cut the center out of it with a sharpened copper pipe. I glued it on to form what kind of looks like a piston. Then I carefully, meticulously, endlessly wrapped it in triangular EVA foam over and over and over again. I would have liked to have just spiraled it up, but then the whole thing would come out slanted. All right, so this is the first one. It's the most difficult one because I had to cut it in half. There were nine altogether, plus a half one at the base where the narrow cylinder connects to the wider cylinder. I tried to keep the seams all on one side because on camera, it's not likely that seams like those would show up at all, but you never know how close the camera is going to get. It might not be up to you. So you want to try and get any possible imperfections all on the same side so that it's easy for the photographer to get a shot on the good side. I'm going to fill in all these little seams with Alex Fast Dry so that when I eventually paint it, all those little seams will be much less visible. Arguably invisible. And I know that looks just awful in comparison to that, but trust me, once it's all painted, it'll look great. All right, it's the next morning. Now there are two wide cylinders, about as wide as this up here. So I'm gonna make those out of more wooden hole saw off cuts. So I hunted around for circles of varying diameters until I found ones I liked. I don't know what this is, but for some reason I have a million of them. I slice those up until they fit. I also use random foam circles for the emitters. I had to widen a few of them with the narrow rotary tool attachment until they match the diameter of the narrow PVC pipe. Then I slid those over the pipe. And for the wider section at the top, I used the interior plastic 
plastic from a child safe pill bottle. Once all the cylindrical aspects were completed, I took it over the belt sander. See, while I personally like the heat sink grip look, those are just a little bit too pointy. There's supposed to be an edge. So I flattened the edges out on the belt sander. Now this is where Obi-Wan's saber differs from Luke's second lightsaber. The grip is a lot more complicated. I attempted it years ago with pipe insulation, but it didn't really work because the insulation was not durable enough. It was basically like slightly better than using a pool noodle. This time around, I'm using a much denser foam in the form of EVA foam triangle strips. I cut divots into the grip with a pair of scissors. There were six rows of divots around the entire saber. For the box on the side, I cut a section of foam floor mat. I sanded a groove in one side so that it would adhere flush to the curved wall of the saber. Scissors tend to put little rips in EVA foam unless they're insanely sharp, which these are not. So I had to sand this just a little bit to get rid of that. And I super glued the frame edges to the top of it. These were cut from quarter inch craft foam for the vents. In the past, I've used brass trim, but I, I can't find it. Oh wait, forgot about the bubble strip. New Hope lightsabers had a bubble strip instead of a vent right here. And they were supposed to look like buttons. In fact, the very first time Luke Skywalker activates his father's lightsaber, he's holding it like that. Got retconned. See, the sabers change in every movie, so trying to make an accurate one is just, it's impossible. So I'm gonna recreate that using half pearls. Then I drilled a hole where I'm gonna put a greebly later. Oh, actually, I gotta cut that part off to make room for the lower grip detail. That's the uh, second area where Obi-Wan's saber differs from Luke's. So I went ahead and did that and replaced the section that I cut off with the pipe fitting. Then I began the painting process. This took three layers of that gloss black base coat before I could do the metallic top coat. When it was dry, I went over it with silver rub and buff. There are shinier silvers, but I'm out. I'll typically use Molotow Chrome or Auto Chrome when I want something to be really chrome. Because this is supposed to be totally smooth and some parts still have a bit of a coarse texture to them even after all the painting, I'm applying the rub and buff much more heavily to those areas in order to erase that texture as the wax finish works its way into those teeny tiny grooves. Trying very carefully to avoid these because those have to be uh, bronze or brass, even copper depending. I'm gonna let that sit to dry for a little bit before doing the orange parts. Dry time for rub and buff is generally between like 30 minutes and instant. And there's no way for me to tell which it's gonna be. It's very easy while you're handling this to put your finger in some not quite dry rub and buff and then grip the black part and then you gotta fingerprint in there. I set that aside to dry for a bit. When it was dry, I used gold rub and buff for the narrow core and the control box accents. Then I added the greeblies. The other greeblies include a small dial for which I have many options, as noted by those of you reading my parts container labels in the background there. But I'm gonna go with the knurled thumb screw. These are usually used as computer feet, but not today. The other detail appears to be a switch made from a pen clip. Then I put a key ring in the hole that I drilled for the pommel earlier, and I added a kyber crystal burgled from Obi-Wan's home on Tatooine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I make and sell them on Etsy. Link in the video description, yada yada yada. Then for the blade, I found a dowel that would fit loosely into the PVC pipe, and I wrapped it with reflective safety tape. Because the adhesion on that tape isn't fantastic over a curved surface, I then wrapped it with clear packaging tape, which holds a lot better. I know that the LED blades are popular, but in photographs, those don't really look so good. It's a thing with camera flashes, they're designed to illuminate the shot as much as possible, which has the effect of canceling out the LED blades, which really only look good in low light. But reflective tape will throw nearly 100% of that flashbulb light straight back into the camera, actually causing what would be considered a lens flare, but it ends up looking like actual lightsabers. So that's what I've been doing. Hey, it was good enough for the original trilogy. Good enough for me. Also for fan films, if you're doing a post effect, it's a thousand times easier to see a reflective blade than a painted wooden stunt blade. Speaking from experience, see that? That blade is brown. It's completely invisible. I don't know what I was thinking. No, I, I was thinking the Harley mallet fits perfectly into the stunt hill. And that's how to make Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber. Hey everybody, thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then you can show your support by hitting the like, subscribe, and bell icon to be notified of future uploads, because I have no way of controlling how fast paint dries. It makes scheduling and upload impossible. If you're interested in supporting the channel so that I don't have to destroy my old props to make new ones, then you can check out the link in the description down below for patron channel services. Anything pledged goes towards improving the video quality, prop quality, and shop equipment, which allows me to produce higher quality content for you all to enjoy. So thank you, patrons. All right. Happy crafting. See you later.